One of the interesting things is that in this period of change, there's masses of, of opportunity. And I always get very upset when people tell me there's no future in community pharmacy. Look, if there's no future in community pharmacy, there's no future in terms of local health care delivery, because that's what we are. So, in my view, there's really, really positive things that can come out of this. We'll sweat a bit, probably for the next two years or three years, but I think out of that, I think we'll have a much stronger industry and an industry that at least will be really involved in healthcare delivery, I hope. The main message out of today is that you can't carry on doing your business as you did before. Because if you do that, I can't see anybody surviving. The fascinating thing for me is when we sort of dig into this and we say, what are you going to do about it? There's a lot of uncertainty. So people say, my business is going to go down. What should I do about it? Where does everybody see their opportunities? The other interesting thing is that not only government is willing to pay you for services, we are now running projects with the pharmaceutical industry who can't give you discounts anymore. And what they're saying to us, you know, how can we get our market share if we can't give discounts? And everybody comes up with exactly the same answer. We will help you deliver services if you put our product as part of that service. Okay? So the sorts of conversations you can have with your product providers is, is how will they help you grow your business through service provision? Big chunk of money. You know, we're doing projects on an international basis that say for adherence, people are getting 42 euros for adherence. Another source of group that comes to talk to us is the healthcare providers. Pretty simple, they want to stop people going to hospital and you can help them and they'll pay for that. Just don't think only of the staff under the agreement. The agreement stuff is really good because it gets you going. But there's not sufficient money in that to sustain you. So use the agreement monies, get your people accredited for HMRs, do meds check, both diabetes, do clinical interventions that are a really good transition period for the next element. Eh? Then we thought, let's have a look at a market that you can start working straight away. A market where you've got clear advantages. Okay, You've got lots of OTC, you've got pretty good product knowledge in those. Let's have a look with a, that people think is a bit good avenue for growth. Look, the people that think that it's going to be five is massive. So we're getting pretty neutral effects by everybody on how to, that whether this market is going to be a potential for growth. A monopoly product. Okay, nobody else sells it. Or, well, some of the products are sold, but most of it doesn't. You're being squeezed to death in the PBS. Why aren't we wanting to grow this market? And what do we need to grow that market? You know, it's roughly worth $2 billion in that order. You know? So if you could just get it working 10% better, that's 200 million bucks. That 200 million bucks will pay you for what's been taken away just for clocking the accelerated price reduction more. So this market is a market that, that I think you can actually hit hard. Interestingly enough, um, what we're seeing is that there's a, a group of people okay, that see a lot of growth in this area. So what we're going to see in practice, if nothing changes, is that a small, a relatively small group, about a third of people hitting this market like mad, who believe that they're going to do it and they're going to go mad on it. So it's about a third of the respondents says, yeah, this is a market that's really good, I'm going to go. A third are neutral and a third see no growth, roughly. That's what that data tells you. So what's the implication of that? That if in your local area you've got a competitor pharmacy and they're going to get into OTCs, you're going to suffer. The main areas are respiratory pain and dermatology. That's the main area where people see their growth. Mainly is in the cough cold area here, with some people telling us asthma is okay, COPD is okay, etc. So the three big areas 
are already the big areas that you have. And it's about stimulating those areas.